Okay? Don't panic. Don't panic, he whispered. A man with red unkempt hair and wearing a cheap, ill-fitting suit was hiding in the corner of a room full of old, busted medical equipment. The noise of his hard, ragged breathing was muffled by the sirens of several police cars outside. Harris Hunter! Someone cried over a megaphone. Harris recognized the voice, and Harris's heart sank. It was his now presumably ex-partner in the force, Morris. A well-groomed older gentleman with short graying hair and beard properly trimmed, wearing a well-fitted maroon-colored suit. He tried to convince Harris to just let things go and not come here. Now the young detective was facing the consequences of his stubbornness. Look, Hunter, buddy, you're surrounded and I can't keep holding these guys back. Step outside, surrender peacefully, and, and we can talk this out. Harris hoped that his old partner wasn't involved in this mess. That Morris wasn't even sure what was going on and that he was called in as a friend to talk him down. He always thought Morris was a good cop and an even better person. Harris couldn't imagine that the old dog would have been involved with all this, but there was a speck of doubt in the back of his mind that lingered. Slowly, gingerly, he crawled his way across the floor to peek out of the corner of a filth-covered window. Through the grime, he could see several police vehicles surrounding the warehouse. Police with weapons at the ready, not to mention a SWAT van rushing in, making things so much worse for the detective. Hunter, you gotta listen to me. Morris continued to negotiate. Harris's old partner looked rather tired, like he hasn't slept in days. We were told dead or alive, and I'm thinking they're fine with the former. But if you give up, you can be the latter, and frankly, it's the only way you're getting out of this alive. The SWAT team didn't even wait for a reply, emptying out of the van and preparing to breach the door. Hey, can you at least let me- Morris started to berate the squad, but then simply sighed and apologized. Sorry, kid. You had your chance. It was a worst-case scenario for Harris, and to say that he was panicking would be an understatement. As his mind rendered through a million different scenarios on how to get out of this predicament alive, he felt something on his shoulder. It was a slimy, goopy, mushy thing and felt very warm. Harris nearly jumped out of his skin, but remembered who the appendage belonged to. A giant pink amorphous blob with something resembling a face attached. It was the thing that the trail of evidence led him to. Harris had reason to believe that this creature was once a normal person turned into a monster. By the corporation known as Shepard's Salubrious Solutions. Not too long ago, Detectives Harris Hunter and Oliver Morris were working on several missing persons cases in the city of Northhawk, a teenage runaway who never made it back home, an old man from an assisted living facility who just vanished. Even some old informants of theirs seemed to have disappeared. Harris looked for clues, followed the patterns, and the only connection he could find is that they were all last seen around the warehouse district downtown on 3rd Street. One that was supposed to be abandoned, but the property was still owned by the pharmaceutical company known as Shepard's Salubrious Services. But once he found that critical information, Morris pulled him aside, told him that without hard evidence, the detective was poking a hornet's nest for even suggesting such a big corp could be involved, and at best could risk losing his job. That sometimes you can't save everyone, and maybe he should let this one go. But Harris just couldn't let it go. He refused. There must be something there in that warehouse. He was sure of it. And under the cover of night, he snuck his way inside. What he found wasn't an abandoned warehouse. Despite the outer facade, the inside of this building wasn't full of dusty storage racks, deserted forklifts, or long-forgotten loading docks. The inside seemed to be more akin to some kind of research facility. But the area seemed to have been vacated in a hurry. A glance at each room revealed a plethora of disheveled equipment and shredded paperwork. What little had survived being torn up had much of the information redacted, which honestly wasn't too surprising to the detective. But he still made sure to take some papers and a couple of pictures of the rooms. While he was gathering evidence, he heard something peculiar. It was like a gargling screech from the level above. 
Harris followed the noises, getting closer and closer, the sounds becoming stranger. There was glass being shattered, objects tossed about, things being ripped apart, then something unexpected. Someone in there was crying. The detective had pistol in hand, just in case, as he got closer to the door. He kicked the door in, weapon at the ready, and found something awful to behold. Hands up! I... 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 Harris was left speechless at the sight. A mass of flesh, writhing and contorting around the room, destroying everything in sight. The form even had two human-like eyes, and they were staring right at him. Frozen in place, he couldn't look away, even as the thing slithered its way up to him. Its giant form looking as if it's about to crush the terrified detective, grabbing his shoulders trying to shake him, moaning and groaning as if he were trying to speak to him. Harris, terrified, punched the creature and pushed it away. The blob, screeching in pain, then shrunk into a ball in a little corner of the room, looking up at the detective with pleading eyes, as if asking for help. Harris wasn't sure how to process all of this. He assumed the Salubrious Services Corporation was just using people to test experimental drugs, not turning people into whatever this thing was. Now that he knew the corporation was behind some sort of insane medical experiment, he could make an educated guess that his missing people may have been the test subjects. Either way, it's possible that this fleshy blob used to be a person. The means by which they were still alive were a mystery to him, but it may well be a living witness to the horrors taking place here. And that's when the detective heard the sirens in the distance. Now Harris was cowering in a corner, presumably fired, and wanted dead on trumped-up charges. Salubrious Services was a powerful company, one that could easily buy and sell someone without a second thought. It wouldn't be unreasonable for him to assume that they also have the police in their pocket and kept tabs on the detective when he started asking one too many questions. But even then, this seems like an overblown response to something that they could easily hide. Harris looked at the mournful creature hiding its head in shame from across the room. Unless they weren't here for me, Harris thought. Maybe I'm just the scapegoat to capture or kill this creature with no one else being the wiser. Which meant that whatever was going on here, he had a very important witness to safeguard. The detective began weighing his options. SWAT was breaking down doors, giving precious little time to choose. Harris looked at the gun clutched in his hands. Should he fight? Dumb idea, he'd be gunned down before he fired a single shot. Not to mention, he didn't know who was and wasn't being paid off. For all he knew, these officers were just doing their job to take out some crazed criminal. Running away was the only real option in this situation. Not just running away, but doing so with some goopy, amorphous blob. Harris looked over to the creature, shaking in fear as much as he was and felt the pangs of pity as he noticed just how human its green eyes were. I don't have much time for introductions, he began. My name is Harris Hunter, and I'm a... Well, I guess I was a detective. And I'm here to help you out. Do you understand me? The blob seemed to have calmed down a bit. It's shaking having stopped. It groaned and nodded its head in confirmation. All right then, now don't panic. Harris tried reassuring his new companion. But we got a SWAT team coming to take us out. The blob started panicking again, its round body jiggling in fear. Hey now, don't worry. I've got no intention of letting that happen. But if you want to get out of here and get back at the bastards who did this to you, you have to listen and do as I do. Got it? The trembling blob calmed itself once again, nodding his head in agreement, trying to show what courage it could. All right then, follow me as best you can. If we hurry, we might be able to find a way to sneak out without being seen. Keep a low profile and stay underneath the windows, Harris instructed. Staying low to the floor, he stepped out of the room and into the hallway that led to the staircase. Trying his best to avoid being seen through the larger windows, lest some unseen snipers take their shot. Harris was surprised at how easily the blob was able to move about. The creature flattening itself into a large disc shape and slowly but surely following him. Unfortunately, they were too late. The stairway door burst open and SWAT rushed inside. 
In that half second of decision making, Harris's fight or flight response kicked in, and somehow the primal lizard part of his brain made him do something stupid. He charged at the men in body armor and assault rifles. The SWAT team also took a half second to register the audacity of someone trying to tackle one of them, as Harris ineffectually pushed against one of the officers. But that half second of confusion ended up saving his life. It was just long enough for the blob to expand itself three times its size and come crashing down upon the SWAT members like a fletchy wave, bowling them over. I'm not gonna overthink that and just be grateful. Harris muttered to himself and rushed down the staircase. In a rather disturbing sight, the blob stretched itself over the railing and down to the bottom of the staircase to follow. At the bottom, Harris burst through the door, only to be greeted by a group of officers ready to shoot him down. Right before they fired, the creature moved with surprising speed, forming a corpulent wall to block the incoming rain of fire. If this harmed the creature in any way, no one could tell, as the bullets seemed to be absorbed by the ivory mass. Not letting the opportunity go to waste, Harris hurried into a grimy back alley. Come on, come on! The detective called to his grotesque companion, and the blob followed, accompanied by a hail of gunfire. The pair fled, with Harris focused on getting to his car. It was stashed a few blocks away. Hopefully it remains unseen to prying eyes. Once there, he could... well, he wasn't sure what he was going to do. He wanted to find the victims, or at least bring some peace to their families. But Morris was right. Stepping on the toes of some big corporation was never going to help. Regardless of what evidence was obtained, he took a moment to shake off those negative thoughts. He needed to focus on staying alive and keeping his witness alive. If they were able to do that, then they still had a chance. Rounding another corner, he could see their savior in the distance, his pride and joy. An old junk car Harris and his grandpa had restored, and the only thing he had ever splurged money on, giving it a bright red paint job and having to constantly replace parts so it could be lovingly maintained. And thinking about all the bullet holes about to be put in it, he felt like he was about to have a panic attack. Pushing aside those feelings, he hopped into the car and turned it on, the engine roaring to life. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Harris called to the blob. It was stretching, contorting, and distorting itself to move across the pavement and made its way to Harris's prize vehicle by crashing through the back window. A horrified gasp escaped from the detective's lips, but he had no time to mourn his companion besmirching a, such a priceless antique. The police were heading their way, and they had to book it. He slammed his foot down on the accelerator and drove off. I don't know how yet, but you're going to be the one paying to fix that. Harris chastised the thing in the back seat. They were weaving through the back streets, desperately dodging any pedestrians, incoming traffic, or prowling cats. The police were in hot pursuit, sirens blaring. Hell, I'd pull you over and kick your ass right now if we weren't trying to stay alive, or if you could be hurt through normal means, and weren't, you know... Weren't you... The anger fell out of his voice as he remembered who he was yelling at. They were in a proper chase now. Harris could see the legion of cop cars on their trail, though he noticed that Morris's car was absent among the horde. While his car could keep the distance, they wouldn't be able to keep this up for long. While the streets were currently desolate, they'd eventually hit an area like the entertainment district full of unwanted obstacles and people. While it may not be the best idea, their best option was to get out of town. And in this part of the city, that meant crossing the Sanguine Pass Bridge. Making a quick turn onto an exit ramp, Harris sped down the highway, the police right behind, all the while dodging cars left and right. The detective was having more difficulty than usual maneuvering his vehicle, almost hitting or even winging more cars than he'd like. It was likely that having the extra ton of flab in the back wasn't helping. The flab itself was bouncing around in the back, just hoping to stay out of the way, its bright green eyes nervously looking to and fro. Harris just focused his attention on getting to the bridge. After that, no clue. But he could only take on one problem at a time. Once they were past the bridge, he could hopefully find a better way to escape once outside city limits. Unfortunately, it seems like the cops had the same idea and placed a barricade at its entrance. Not only with several police vehicles, but a spike trap as well, and at the car's speed, he couldn't make a quick turnaround. There was only a half second to figure out a plan, and a bad one was right next to the bridge. A pile of discarded construction equipment, boxes, and wooden boards laid on top of each other. It almost looked like it could be a ramp if someone squinted hard enough. Uh, well, a chance to succeed is better than none, Harris muttered to himself. 
And if you're a religious blob guy, I'd start praying. He yelled to his companion as they hit the garbage pile at top speed. To the surprise of the cops, the blob, and especially Harris himself, his old junker soared across the heavens, over the river, and crashed onto the other side. For a moment, everyone was frozen in utter disbelief, wondering if what just happened really happened. Harris sat there in shock, even as two headlights shined on him from the darkness. Apparently, Morris knew his old partner too well and was waiting on the other side of the bridge to strike. His expensive bright blue vehicle charged at them, Morris ready to risk it all to prevent Harris's escape. The detective was still in a stupor, unresponsive until a fleshy tendril smacked some sense into him, then remembered what the hell he was doing and he needed to get the hell out of there. But it was too late. The two cars smacked into each other. Harris's old junker was knocked off the cliff and into the river below. The impact knocked the wind out of Harris, causing him to black out as the water engulfed him. Sometime later, Harris awoke to discover he was miraculously alive, coughing up water, lungs burning and shivering from the cold, but alive on what looks like a riverbank in a forest far outside the city. He wasn't exactly sure how he was still alive, though he could take a guess. The blob was nearby, frantically rubbing two sticks together in a makeshift fire pit though it seemed that with its soft, wiry appendages, it was a futile effort. Despite every muscle in his body screaming at him to stop, he was able to seat himself next to his new friend. Here, l let me help, Harris said weirdly, holding on his hands. The least I could do since you saved my ass about, what, three times now? It was hard to tell, but he believed he could see the gratefulness in the thing's eyes as it gladly handed over the sticks. As Harris worked on building a fire, he mused over their current situation. Things were looking bleak, and both of them knew it. He wanted to give his new friend some words of encouragement, as his grandpa used to when things were rough. Hey, look, the detective tried breaking the awkward silence. I know we're on the run. People want us dead, and you've been turned into something that goes against the laws of both God and man. He stopped himself, very aware that he started his pep talk in the worst way. Sorry. What I'm trying to get at is that I know we're at rock bottom. But that just means we can only go up from here. And we've still got a company to take down. Not just for us, but for everyone else's lives they ruined. So I guess I'm saying that... Despite how bad things are, I'm not giving up. How about you? The blob vigorously shook his head in defiance, and Harris couldn't help but smile. Good, he said. But let's start carpo busting after we take a little nap. They both sat next to the fire, resting on a log, soaking in the flame's warmth and of the rising sun of a new day. All right, that's it. Uh, it's, it's over. It's done. Uh, I usually don't do an end thing to these types of videos, but I did want to say that if you did make it to the end here, to, uh, well, I guess thank you. Thank you for watching and or listening. Because this took uh, longer than I thought it would. Longer than it should have. But uh, anyway, if I, if I keep going like this, I'll just be rambling on forever. But if you like the video, you know, the usual YouTube thing of, you know, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. I know it's not perfect. Any praise or criticism of these types of videos are always appreciated. Um, uh, let's check out our other stuff. I, uh, uh, we, I, I do have other types of videos that are like this. We also got, you know... A thousand and one things. Well, not literally a thousand. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Bye!